She will ask me uh, where's her father. You know, people that are all dead. We do have a problem coping with the care of these people as the disease progresses with time. So I guess if you could say that this problem is of tsunami-like proportions. The people that we bring on stage are going to be different each time as well. So what happens there is totally spontaneous. We don't know what element that's going to bring to the show. So that's why it's so exciting. That's why we can do it for so long, so many shows. And that's why people come back again and again. You know? you oh, wow. My name is Yo Eng Sing. I just passed my 72 birthday, born 1943. I retired about 12 years ago from HTV. After I retired, I was just doing nothing and just hanging around for about a year. And I find life very boring. So I started looking for a part-time job. Yeah, when the Pioneer Scream started in September last year, I was appointed to be one of the ambassador for them. So I going to the Pioneer Generation home to explain to the Pioneer Generation about the package. Usually after my breakfast, I immediately take my seven pills. Hypertension, I got two tablets. One is for diabetes, one for my protease problem. I also take another tablet for my heart to prevent angina. Before Chinese New Year, I was alone at the house and it was about eight something and I was preparing breakfast. So I could prepare the water, put the egg in the water and turn on the switch. About one minute later, I just simply went to switch on the TV to watch the news. It was about 8.30 news, I think. After 20 minutes, I could smell smoke. I, I could see smoke coming from the kitchen, and I quickly came back and found the stove, the kettle, everything was blackened. My wife was very angry. She called my son. She told me one last time, she said, you cannot use the stove, you are far from using the stove. During my younger days, my memory was very, very good, above average. Now this is definitely below average. If I read newspaper, I forget about... After a few hours, I forgot what I read. Sometimes I go up to the bus, I forgot to tap the bus card. I go to have my meal with my bag. Then I came back without the bag. At 
everything, almost everything I forget. Well, it's true that not all memory problems um, imply dementia. Many older people with memory problems do have dementia. And so their, their memory problems are not just age-related memory decline, but really symptoms of a true degenerative uh, disease like dementia. Dementia is an umbrella term for a group of symptoms that relate to cognition, right? And when it's an umbrella term, many diseases of the brain can cause dementia. Commonest being Alzheimer's disease. Second being vascular dementia. Third being, for example, frontotemporal dementia. So again, in terms of brain disease itself, there are about eight or nine diseases can contribute to dementia. We have mild stage, moderate stage, severe stage. And the set of issues are different at each stage. For example, in the mild stage, it may be problems with memory and hence can't function at work. In the severe stage, they may have behavioral changes, for example, hallucinations. Nagendran, I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? How old are you now? 1943, November. 1943, yeah? so you are... Last birthday, 72. Are you forgetful? Yes, very. Give me some examples of what you forget. Forgot to switch off the stove. Forgot to close the main door. <coughs> mm -hmm. If you had memory loss that is occasional, then I wouldn't be too worried about it. A person who's busy, who's involved in multiple things, who's not having enough sleep, who's stressed, can be forgetful occasionally. But if these type of problems keep recurring, they don't go away, and it is obvious to people around you, and if it's persistent for a period of more than six months, then you definitely need to be checked for these features of dementia. When did the episode of losing your back happen? The whole back was uh, in, the, in the train. When was that? Two years ago. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. How long have you been forgetful? About three years already. Is it getting worse? Yes. Does your wife notice that you're forgetful? Yes. Okay. I'm going to examine you now, okay? This is the visual quantitative assessment tool, and this is a tool that we use to see whether a patient has indeed uh, quantifiable dementia. The problem has been all previous tools were mainly developed for native English speakers. So when we apply these tools to our local patients who are non-English speakers, they have a lot of difficulty understanding the tool. So what our team came up with is a tool called the Visual Quantitative Assessment Tool, which is more pictorial, more figure-based, which means that you, there's no need for translation. Can you tell me what you see in this picture? The thing overflow because the tap was not off or defective. Mm -hmm. It flooded part of the floor near the kitchen cabinet of the sink. Okay. There are challenges because not all the symptoms are going to be textbook-like or very clear-cut. And when we look at dementia, we don't only look at the memory. We also look at um, the function. So function meaning what are the activities of daily living like, which includes dressing, bathing, toileting, ambulating, uh, going to the ATM, getting your money, marketing, cooking. So these are the functions that we look at which will be affected if one has dementia. You know, I have CEOs of companies coming and telling me I still go and run my business. I've been signing checks. 
right? So artificially, you ask a question like that, it sounds normal. But when you dig in a bit more deeper, I have now four secretaries to help me. I have someone to oversee every check that I sign. So that is not normal function. You travel on your own? Yes. You use the public transport? Yes. Have you ever gotten loss? No. Finances, you take care of yourself? Yes. So you go to the bank, you withdraw yeah. money. When you go and buy things, do you know how much to pay, how much yeah, to get yes. back? Okay. Each of us have a memory center on the right side and on the left side where all the information is stored. This is front view, eh? Yeah? This is a front view. Okay. This here is your right memory center. Yeah. And this here is your left memory center. Yeah. Do you see any difference between the two sides? The left one looks a bit, uh, there's some black, mm. triangular. Right, you're right. But here, so, there's only very, very slight. All right. So this, on your right side, is very normal. Okay. This is how it should be. On the left side, what's happened is, we see a bit of a black space, which means your memory center has shrunken a bit. But it is still in the very mild stage. So this would be a condition called mild cognitive impairment. Now, it is not dementia yet, yes. it's mild cognitive impairment. And when we see a result like this, what we normally do is we follow up every six months to memory a test. memory test to see whether it, whether you are remaining well or are your symptoms and your performance going down. So Mr. Yu, are you worried? Oh yes, I'm still worried. Although the degree of worry is now slightly reduced. On the scale of 8 is to 10, now my weight is about 6 upon 10. This is another photo that shows my own family. This was taken about 20 years ago. This is myself, my wife, my eldest son, his wife, the twins, granddaughter. My eldest grandson was not around. I think he went somewhere else. <laughs> so that's, he's missing there. I got married in 1975. I knew my wife through another colleague of mine in the National Service. The relationship was very smooth and very good until 10 years ago when I retired. I, I have to stay at home more often. And uh, as a saying go, familiarity beats condemn, I think. Uh, don't mind me asking, do you feel lonely? Uh, not exactly. I don't feel lonely most of the time. Because I got so many community events, so many friends. And I socialize quite easily with a lot of people. Most of the time, uh, I'll meet uh, Mr. Yo alone. Uh, and if we were to cross to JB, the Johor Bahru, then we'll meet his friend there and we'll just move around. I think Mr. Yo is, is quite lonely. Yeah. Uh, at home, he, is, uh, he has lesser interaction with his wife. His kids are busy. His, his, his sons are uh, uh, doing quite well in the society. So I do ask him to be active and also uh, to, to plan his time more with friends. And on the family aspect, I won't say that I can come in to give any advice because it all depends on his family. Social interaction has found to be very useful. For people who are not socially active are at a higher risk of developing dementia.
this is the brain scan that we did for you in uh, on the 20th, 28th of September last year. Yeah. So the right side is full. quite quite clear. It's quite normal. Huh? Quite but on the left side, we see this black space. A little bit. Which tells us there's a bit of shrinkage of your memory center on the left. And when we see shrinkage like that, we are worried about a condition called Alzheimer's. Yeah. But what we can do is consider medications that can slow down the disease. Right. So if this is Alzheimer's disease, it's a very early stage Alzheimer's disease. So and, cannot uh, reverse. Cannot reverse, but medications can slow down the shrinkage. So it's a sure case of Alzheimer or not? Based on this MRI, based on your symptoms, what we call as probable Alzheimer's disease. Probable. So I better start prepare myself. <laughs> My worst fear is that I am worried that I will be bedridden at the later stage. And uh, I don't want to bother people and that's a very, very bothersome thing to, to happen to anybody. As the disease progresses, other parts of the brain also become shrunken because it's all connected. Right? So once you cut the roots, the trunk and the leaves will also eventually die. 10 to 15 years ago, uh, we used to see just a small proportion, probably about 20% of our patients with early dementia. The rest would be patients with moderate stage and even late stage dementia. Today, we see perhaps 50% uh, of our patients first presenting with memory complaints to our clinic uh, with very early, early symptoms. At the beginning, what you'll notice first is memory. But over time, you'll start realizing that all the other aspects also are affected. Everything gets affected. The speech, judgment, the way they think, the way they move around even. So that's why they start behaving a bit differently. But they may not say that it's because something is wrong. Nobody wants to admit that something is wrong. During this mild stage, you will actually also start noticing that they start becoming actually a little bit more irritable, a bit more anxious, a bit more sensitive. Part of the reason is because many of them actually know that there's something wrong with themselves. Many of them actually know that their memory is going downhill, that something is not quite right. My mom has always been very independent and she, she's quite a stubborn lady, so she does everything herself. So my mom has been staying uh, alone, uh, on and off, um, will stay over my place, but most of the time she's alone. And we noticed that she, her spending habit became quite strange because um, every time we give her pocket money and very soon she'll say she got no money. Okay,有没有说会衰退? 我不喜欢用人啊你不喜欢用人啊如果你OK 
他们跟你做物理治疗、做 exercise， 那么也是有跟那个其他热灵人士谈天啊。我不大喜欢出去参加这些。So sure， 不稳定是吧 ？Yeah，Yeah， 你呀，你是比较内向哈。<笑>我不喜欢外面穿那些三顾六福的，<笑>冬夏穿是一在短。OK OK。好像连厕所叫我去我都不要。可能就是去一次先呐、啊，一天一次试试看啦、啊。我在家都 OK 的，是你们不放心才。This is her where I store her medicine. This is for like diabetes, high blood pressure, just things that she needs to take daily. So I put it inside this box, and she knows when to take the medication,、um, like morning, afternoon, and evening. And then I just top it up every week. She has aged a lot, but、uh, and she was quite a fierce grandmother, but now not so much. We used to look forward to her、uh, cooking, especially during Chinese New Year, because she she's Hainanese and she makes the best Hainanese rice. But she doesn't do it anymore, so I'm trying to learn from her. As I started spending more time with her. There were telltale signs in the sense that whenever we have a conversation,、uh, it it will start to repeat itself. So, like I will buy food for her, and then like five minutes later, she'll ask me,、uh, "Have you eaten? Have we eaten?" I'm like, "Yes, we just ate." Sometimes she will call and ask for money, market money or whatever. We give it to her every month, or whenever we give it to her, and then she five minutes later or like ten minutes later, she'll ask, "Where did I put my money? You have not given me the money." Turn out, you know, it, it, she has minor strokes, like small, very little, tiny strokes in her brain, which apparently is signs a、uh, sign of a、uh, vascular dementia. Keep shouting every every ten minutes. It started with every half an hour. Then it became more and more frequent. Then we, the doctor start to give him some medicine to to put in more sedative, so he doesn't shout so much. So he he start to deteriorate from there onwards. And then two years ago, he already completely bedridden. He just passed away in January this year. When he was staying with me, I can see. The the stress my mom goes through because he will be every two minutes he wants to go to the toilet, he wants to take a shower, he will say he is hungry. I mean he's just constantly、um, disturbing someone. So now we're trying to engage her more, to engage her in more activities and stuff. Trying to I know there's no known cure now, but、um, we're trying to prolong it as long as we can. Today是什么年？今年是零零幺三年。零幺三年，今年是二零幺六。二零幺三呐，你去看凯兰的。你你看凯兰的不是我看凯兰的。今年是二零幺六，现在几月？今年是九月。年刚刚过亿嘞，
自己家里要打横碎、打直碎，几点冲凉你喜欢？去他那边，虽然他不会管我，不过我自己不自在的，所以我不要。他每次叫我去他那边。他说你一个人你要跌倒，我跌倒你打电早上打我没有听，中午打没有听，傍晚打没有听，你有心就过来了，不然就等错了报纸的那某某物里面有错位你才来咯，就收集，丢到海里面去咯。我每次跟他们这样讲，你不用我的，我很独立的，我不像那些老太婆，能软软弱弱的。我很凶的，你没有教到我，你教到我，你知道我是很凶的。The most important thing that we we got out of this, I guess, if you compare it with my grandfather's experience, was that you know we became more alert and aware that, especially in elderly, whenever there are signs, you know, that their character has changed, it doesn't hurt to bring them to see a doctor, even though they refuse. Martial is my passion, and all while I started off uh, since twelve, I start teaching Wing Chun due to its popularity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been working in the uh, stockbroking industry for as a remise here for the past 20 over years, and uh, within which uh, 20 years being spent in the executive committee. Uh, currently, I'm the president of the society. We meet each other in in the grassroots. We're both uh, volunteers, grassroots volunteers. That was 10 years ago, and I find him uh, quite an interesting character. Uh, someone whom I can sort of uh, mix around and, you know, despite our difference in age, we've been good friends. Mr. Yo, there's a drop in memory, I can tell. Sometimes when I fix appointment to meet him and, and you find that he's, uh, he could be late and he took the wrong bus, uh, it could be the case that uh, when I'm with him together, he's he might know where, he might forget where he put his specs, you know, it happens a few times. Well, I, I can see there's a bit of concern down there. He said uh, that, you know, uh, they told me I got dementia, you know. So, Jimmy, what, what do you think I can do? <laughs> you know, he told me this. Uh, you know, he, like as if he take it as a pinch, uh, with a pinch of salt, but I, I, I do know that he's concerned. Mr. Yo. Were you worried when you told Jimmy about your diagnosis? Well, the initial shock was quite, quite bad. Uh, to the extent of getting a bit of depression and so on. So after discussing with my good friend here and my family members and some other NGO like the Alzheimer Association, we attended the course. So with some family counselling done by the NNI, and all the support uh, from other people. So slowly, so yeah, I'm getting almost forgot about the, <laughs> the illness, which is, I think, very important.
you are seeing me for in terms of forgetfulness. Yeah, I, I noticed that uh, starting for the last three, three years, sometimes uh, memory lapses comes in more. Sometimes I can talk to people and my, I'm, my mind can drift away and uh, I, I can forget what, what I've just said. Or, or rather, uh, what I have pictured in my mind and what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. I forgot what I wanted to say. I, I can have my shower in, uh, in, in the day and, and I forgot that I have had my shower and I sit there and have I had my shower? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes it's irritating when I go downstairs. First thing goes downstairs, I walk into my car and hey, I forgot and other things. So I went up, go upstairs and and um, to collect that item, after that I go downstairs again and I forgot another thing and I go upstairs. <laughs> spend two hours walking, yeah. <laughs> walking yeah. around the car park, you know, the Marina car park, uh, looking for my car. Mm. I mean, if you look at it from a general doctor's perspective, memory symptoms are quite common among the elderly. So I think the difficulty is when is this part of normal aging and when is this part of a disease like dementia? So that differentiation becomes a bit uh, difficult and it's a very fine line. To summarize, it seems to be mainly a problem with memory. And I think the fact that it is getting worse over the last one or two years, I think that is what we are concerned about. And to see whether this is dementia or not. So we need to investigate you further whether you have any other brain changes that will put you at a higher risk or not. Yeah? Especially now that you have hypertension. So what I want to do is, um, we need to do a full psychological assessment, right, and also a brain scan. Okay. Just this is what you're trying to do. We'll arrange for these two, and then we'll see you again after these two is done, to update you and to see whether you need any treatment or not. Okay. Yeah, we are all concerned about dementia. In my case, for instance, I have a 94-year-old uh, father-in-law at home, uh, and I have a maid taking care of him. He's got dementia. You know, and when dementia comes, it, it just comes. You know, uh, two weeks ago, he can be admitted into the hospital with a perfectly uh, good mental state, can speak to you, and two weeks later, that's it. He's down with dementia. He, can, he can't talk. He can't recognize anybody. So that, 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 that is the, the, the problem. And not only, I believe that not only with the, the patient himself, it's also the impact on his surrounding people. So what we'd like you to do is just join the numbers in order, huh? draw lines to join them in order. Right. So some doctors who do not do a full assessment may think that this is part of aging and dismiss dementia as part of aging. So that's one of the challenges. And in the assessment of dementia, you need time and time is always difficult. So that is again another challenge for doctors. So patients have to go through a formal assessment of their memory. And if the memory assessment also shows deficits, then that would be indicative of uh, dementia. So over the last four months, how has your memory been? Uh, coping. I'm going to show you the MRI scan that was done on the uh, 10th of March. This is the memory center on the right side, and this is the memory center on the left side. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a small black space, but they're very, very small and negligible at the time being. So they're largely quite within the normal range. Good. And when our psychologist did the testing for you today, on one test you got 27 out of 30, on a more difficult test you also got 27 out of 30, mm -hmm. which is also within the normal range. So okay. I think you do not have dementia, so overall your brain looks within normal limit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> At least I, I'm happy, you know, that I have gone through the test and I know uh, my situation. So I think that it is something pretty 
good of most of uh, people who approaching old age to, to, to go through, you know, to at least where you stand, know, to know where you stand. Yeah. Often older people don't want to know. They don't want to know what's wrong with them, right? Have you encountered that? There, there are people like that. Uh, I, I don't think that there's a solution to, to problems. Uh, to, to, to be evasive, to stay away uh, and, and, and not wanting to know. You know, whatever that is a, a, a condition at the stage one, perhaps you can still do something. You may still have something called mild cognitive impairment. Patients with MCI have a 10% risk of developing dementia every year. At the moment, you do not have dementia, you don't need any treatment, no medical treatment, but you need other things like making sure you have enough sleep, reducing stress, keeping your mind active by doing uh, activities like you know watching the news reading the newspapers doing crosswords doing puzzles all that is good doing some physical exercise is good yeah so you must find that balance uh. mm -hmm. and because if you keep worrying a lot worry itself is not good for the brain that can cause brains to brain cells to shrink but everyone does have some form of memory loss isn't that normal that is called normal aging, right? Normal aging, what happens with the aging process is you, you tend to have some difficulty with your thinking process. But that difficulty is mainly a slow processing speed. So you could previously uh, do something in say 30 seconds, now you take two or three times longer. But you'll still be able to complete the task. So that is what happens with aging, you take longer to complete the task. But when you cannot complete the task, then that is something more worrisome. I was told by the machine staff during the family conference to do a few things. Physically, be very active. Socially, be very closely related to friends, colleagues, neighbors, relatives, family especially. Mentally, I have to take up some challenging things like playing chess, playing mahjong, reading, jigsaw puzzle puzzle and all that. Okay, so you can start when you're ready. Two weeks after my onset, I managed to engage a caregiver who was formerly working for us part-time. I think it was a hasty move after the initial shock. But my family is not very happy that I went to register without telling them. They think that uh, I have not reached that stage. And according to the, my own research, the first stage may last three to five years. And uh, I'm thinking to myself if it's I'm looking at five years, then I will be 78 then. Then it's the, maybe it's about time that I say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> 
我再也有发言吗？我退休下来，我这样。龙虎。My brother and I were actually at her place, and then we realized that um she kept complaining that she was feeling itchy. So I thought, you know, like maybe we should just like check. So I realized that she had a little bit of like a I think it's a heat rash or something. I'm not too sure. Um, so I took a, a cover of photos and sent it to my dad and then we the next day we brought her to a doctor to check because it all boils down to the fact that she didn't shower regular she doesn't shower regularly uh, when she was living on her own. My daughter uh, put her medicine in the medicine box for the week. And usually we go on a weekend to top it up again, but uh, the medicine box was untouched. So basically, that's how we found out that she didn't take a medication. But when you ask her, she says she did. So after that discovery, we decided to put her, uh, insist that she stay with me instead of staying on her own since the last time we met. So every time she wants to go back, like she said, I want to go home and all that, I will remind her that, oh, the house has been rented out. So that kind of uh, distracted her for a while. But she does that every morning. Yeah, if I say I go go shopping or what, your father worry, say I alone. Must you somebody follow me? That's why I don't like. 自由吗？我在这边，有时我要出去，你们又说哦，不一个人不要出去了 ，alone better don't 啊。But I know I myself can alone, but you all 不放心吗？One of the things I would say that I'm a bit, uh, I think I feel a bit, uh, maybe a little bit upset also is because that she sometimes, her emotions are not very stable. So sometimes she will say things like, I, I hope like, you know, other people can, they, other people can pass away so easily. I want to like pass away so easily too. I don't want to go happy for, happy for I mean, I love her a lot. She's my mother. Now that she's a bit more vulnerable, uh, let me rethink uh, a lot of things. For example, we take for granted that she's always going to be healthy. But now that she's staying with me, we make more time and effort to spend time with her. And we learn to appreciate the time we have for her as long as we can. So right now, you ask me what, what I'm prepared to do. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm prepared to do anything that makes her Memory lasts as long as it's, it can. In Singapore, I think we have to make use of our our geographical uh, boundaries, our technology, our healthcare system. And in Singapore, I think there's enough reasons why we should screen not every single person, but those who are at high risk for dementia. There'll be no way we completely cure Alzheimer's disease. But I think we are going to be able to retard the process sufficient enough that patients can have a quality of life right into their 80s and 90s. There is a tendency for people to not want to be associated with dementia because there is stigma associated with it. But with so many people who are going to come down with dementia, there is perhaps a need to normalize it, you know, to actually see, not say that this is normal, 
they help people say that well it's a form of cognitive handicap just like people with physical handicap can still continue to try to, to, to lead lives that are as close to normal as possible with the necessary help.